Hello out there. Hello out there. Yeah. I am the poet Engelstrom. Yes, indeed, I am the poet Engelstrom. I have many poems. I have many complaints. <laughs> I think America's greatest writer is William Saroyan. Who else would think that, huh? William Saroyan. <laughs> complaints? Is it any wonder? Just a minute. Okay? Complaints, huh? Okay, complaints. Yeah. Cavernous cacklings bombard me. Scarabic chitons crawl out my ears. Maggots mate among my toes. My mouth opens and monster moths fly from my throat. Yeah. Gray jelly sloughs from my lidless eyes. I defecate through my navel and fornicate with my nose. And nobody loves me. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. William Saroyan is America's greatest writer. Yes? No? I've studied the matter very carefully. <laughs> Do you realize I've studied Armenian? I've studied many languages, German, Greek, Arabic, Spanish, Middle English, Russian, yes, Russian. Yeah, I also read and write it, you bet. There are some sounds, Slavic. Beautiful, beautiful, be you, be you. The Banshee Wales. What is the Banshee? Well, Sheba, queen of, queen of what? Well, Tut, the king of ancient curse. What curse? Tut tut, that curse that cursed the men that dug the pyramids midst desert sands and heard the banshee wails wail out the mouth of Sheba, queen of what? Sheba's queen, but queen of what? Begin again, where deep the rut. The banshee wails of Ho Chi Minh along the trail of old King Tut Amid the crumbling pyramid that stands in sands, Queen Sheba trod. And she banshee is she not? Yes, she banshee Sheba be. But banshee Sheba wails for Tut, and then again for Ho Chi Minh. But no one curse it, wails for what? Fill in this blank, shirk not the task, 
lest banshees shrieks wail their demands and ask, ask what? Begin again, but, but what? But schmutt, that's what, and also so are Sheba Tut and Uncle Ho. Where was I? I was where? I was there. I was here. I was Russian, yes, Russian. I have read the Russian poets. All of them. Most of them. Listen, I have even translated the song of Igor's campaign. The Slova a Palku Igarieve, a medieval masterpiece of Russian literature written by some unknown glory of a poet. I tell you, I have translated it from the old Russian. Really translated it, recreated it. Of course, there are other translations. There are sins, sins. Even the Russians butchered it. But I was inspired, inspired, I tell you. How could I be otherwise? How could those others not be? They understood nothing, nothing but the words of this epic, but they missed the language, they missed the poem. But I worked, inspired. I was that poet. Listen, just, just listen to this. They said some of this was untranslatable. They didn't even try, goddammit. Nothing is untranslatable in poetry if one is a poet. I tell you, poets have got to start studying other languages. They've got to do this. It's worth it, I tell you. It's worth it. And here's the part where Prince Igor, the Russian warrior knight, has just escaped from the camp of the Polovtsi barbarians. Dusk has faded to darkness. Now Igor sleeps inert. Now Igor keeps alert. How Igor, in his thoughts, measures the step from the great dawn to the little Donets. At midnight, with a horse of lure whistled from the far bank of the river, he bids the prince understand. Prince Igor shall not remain here, thus he called, and the earth's rumble was heard, and the grass sighed a soft word, and the tents of the Polovtsi stirred, and Prince Igor raced to the reeds like an ermine, and onto the water like a white sea duck. He sprang upon the swift horse, and hurled himself off it later, as if possessed of a wolf, and sped to the meadows of the Donets, and flew like a falcon under mists, slaughtering geese and swans for breakfast, for lunch, and for dinner. Maladiet, Engelstrom, I did that well, that's fantastic. It's a fantastic poem. I know that translation is great creation that matches the original, or at least comes close to it. Anyway, it's better than most other translations. As good as them anyway, as good as a lot of them. No. Maybe better, maybe not. It doesn't matter. Matter, matter, matter. Can it make a difference? Does it matter? <laughs> Does it matter? <laughs> Matter, 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 matter. Clean dusts, motes, grooved in moon rays, shout silent trills of air. Artichokes, asparagus spears, and chilies all are rare. The careful clicks of sea snails are screams from the warm ooze. Feathers of the pelicans drip down upon the news. Coyotes howl at eagles that die among their guts. The fishermen sit silent behind their new steel huts. Fall of leaves is constant, autumn every season. Poets poet anyway without rhyme or reason. Ticks of yang, tocks of yin. Poets can't make oxygen. What's a poet to do? How much worse is a versist verse if a versist versus verse? Do you know I can play the violin? I often do. Play the violin, sort of. I used to be sort of a fair violinist. I mean, I used to play. I can still play. I can do that. Okay.
Melancholy baby. Melancholy baby. What is it about that song? There's something about that song that slips my mind. I know. It's a joke. It's an old joke. There's this drunk at a vaudeville show. One of the acts is an opera singer. She's singing a Mozart aria. Roy kiss a pity. Drunk yells out, hey, sing Melancholy Baby. She ignores him, keeps on singing. He yells again, hey, let's hear Melancholy Baby, lady. She ignores him. Again he yells, come on, lady, don't you know Melancholy Baby? Finally he's got to her. She stops singing and looks at him with her coolest and proudest stare and says, Young man, I would not know Melancholy Baby. The drunk yells, well, if you don't know Melancholy Baby, show us your tits. <laughs> yes, indeed, show us your tits. Oh, yes, indeed, yes. I know Melancholy Baby. I know Melancholy Baby. Melancholy Baby, Melancholy Baby. I was married once, I have children. I have that. I can play the violin, I have children. I've traveled, I can travel. I've been around Europe, Mexico, many places, a lot. I can do a lot of things. I can vote, I sure can do that. I did vote, I sure did. I can always vote. I can go back to Mexico too, instead of voting. I spent a year there once. Oh, I loved it. Those landscapes, villages. Yes, I can travel. Does it matter? Does it? I have children. Do you know that it doesn't matter? Never mind matter, it doesn't, mind, never. And Engelstrom walks in and out of bestial zoos and dreams, strange talking dreams of words and turds that are the same as turds and words and both are one another. Engelstrom walks in and out of languages and dreams of new and nearer languages and reaches out and nibbles at Shakespeare's chants and Chaucer's bowels. And Engelstrom walks in and out, walks in and out, walks in and out. And Engelstrom, and Engelstrom, and Engelstrom! Shouts Engelstrom. So you see, it's just like I was saying earlier about Soviet poetry, and especially Mayakovsky. Didn't I? Wasn't I saying about Mayakovsky earlier? Maybe not. It doesn't matter. But that was a poem that Mayakovsky may have liked. But what? But schmutt, that's what. But he probably would have. Probably. Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe Tolstoy would have liked it. I don't know. I think he would have. 
But then he didn't even like war and peace, Voyna Imir. He called it trash. And I've always agreed with him. Of course, Tolstoy is not known as a great poet. A great writer, yes. But not a poet like Mayakovsky. Mayakovsky was definitely a poet. A lousy writer, but a great poet. Do you know what he wrote in one of his poems? He wrote, Idu krasivi dvacoti dvukdietni. Then he wrote, Budu bjezu karižnija nježni, njemu skina, a oblakavštana. You know what that means? I walk handsome, 22 year old. I shall be irreproachably tender. Not a man, but a cloud in pants. That's what it means and that's what he wrote. Can you imagine a cloud in pants? <laughs> and did it matter? Does it matter? I have children, my children, I was married once. A cloud in pants. Later on he wrote revolutionary poems for the Soviet government, goddamn good ones. I mean, the man was a poet. Then he wrote slogans for posters, and then he shot himself at 36. 36 years old, bang! What's a poet to do? 36 years old and bang! I'm almost 65 years old, almost 65 myself. What's a poet to do? I'm almost 65 and I hunger to be touched. I'm almost 65 and I want to return to Sonora, hear mariachis under a mezcal moon, and sleep drunken on the saguados. Almost 65 and I'm obsessed with Russian words. Kazmichesky krovi karovi. Cosmic bloody cows. Mierzka je, mjortva je, marožna je. Miserable, dead ice cream. Just listen. Ice cream. Marožna je. I'm almost 65 and I fiddle on my fiddle, hoping for music to touch me again. Nero is a pissant. I fiddle while the planet plunges up in flames of poison and violence. I'm almost 65, Mayakovsky. Were you still a cloud in pants at 35? I'm no cloud in pants, and I'm almost 65. Almost 65, not a man, but an erection in thin air, thrusting for a touch, nothing to contain me. I ejaculate words into a still and sterile void. Marojna je. I'm almost 65, Mayakovsky. You knew the world needed slogans, not poems. Today, the world needs oxygen. Can poets make oxygen? I want to make oxygen, and I'm almost 65. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> that up there is the moon. <laughs> it's always a new moon. <laughs> And sometimes I know that all the poems have been spoken and there's nothing to say that hasn't been said. But the moon rises again for the first time like a new word to the tongue. And poets are born and reborn with every change of the tide. And I'm goddamn alive! I'm still goddamn alive! But goddamn again born! Yes, indeed, I am the poet Engelstrom. It does matter. And Prince Igor flew like a falcon under mists, slaughtering geese and swans for breakfast, for lunch, and for dinner. Yes, that matters. It matters. It does make a difference. 
to speak is to breathe. To breathe is to sense the air. Poems are oxygen. I love it. I can love it. This is the time of my life. Budu bjezu karizhnia nezhni, nie muskina, a oblaka v shtanach. I can be irreproachably tender, not a man, but a cloud in pants. William Saroyan, you are America's greatest writer. Hey, hello out there. I am the poet of Nostra. I no longer need to bow to the sad rain of my wits. And the moon speaks poems from above. Ah, oh, melancholy baby, you have shown me your bright tits.